Pray with me, please. Holy One, may your spirit be in the midst of us this evening. May it sponsor to us open hearts and open minds to the way that you move in each and every one of us. And we ask this in your many names. Amen. Amen. So our guest today is someone who, if you've never met them, is sure to be at least a little familiar. Um, they were part of Channel 4's My Transsexual Summer, and if I get any of this wrong, just no, sure throw it um, a little while back, and helped to create the My Generation film uh, project that currently has over 60 short films created by them, uh, by and their partner Al. Uh, they also created a trans acting course at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama with Gendered Intelligence, and a script consultant, and is a script consultant on East Enders for their trans storylines. Mm. Uh, they worked with Will Young on the music video Brave Man, casting a trans lead, of course. Um, they also played Jake in Radio 4's Tales of the City by Armistead Morpin, and star as Blake in the web series As We Are. Uh, they were an advisor for the BBC, the Daily Mail, the Sun, the Observer, <laughs> Pioneer, the course Trans Pride. A uh, fabulous artist. Oh, I love the art. And, um, and I encourage you to check some of that out later. I'll give you the website details before we, before we close today. And, and if that wasn't enough, uh, their partner Al is from Iceland, which I think has got to be the most amazing, coolest place in the world. Um, so um, I would like you please to help me welcome our guest today, Fox Fish. Nice. So I've got your questions. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Really good, thank you. Yes. Good. Good. It's lovely to have you with us. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be here. Yeah. So I put together some questions, and, and hopefully you'll be able to help them. And this is kind of from my own perspective. So thank you. Um, these are some of the things that have puzzled me. Uh, the first is, uh, what is the relationship between non-binary gender and transgender? So if somebody identifies as non-binary, does that automatically mean that they're transgender? Okay, so um, I think Al would be great to, to respond to some of these questions as well. If you wanted to speak too or on, on these, on this add subject, you, you can add some, yeah. some, some, <laughs> some input. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, so, uh, not necessarily. So, um, first of all, people who are trans identify as uh, something other than the gender that they're assigned at birth. So, um, that, that also includes non binary people, but there are some non binary people who don't feel that they that they identify as trans, that they are part of the uh, trans experience, they perhaps don't feel that they're going somewhere, or they feel that their uh, gender identity falls outside of, of um, what they think uh, trans encompasses. So they just don't feel comfortable identifying as that. But actually the majority of the people do who identify as non-binary, like myself as well. Um, uh, gosh, I, I, it's really hard to explain um, something that you feel inside, but gender identity and gender expression are two different things. Um, so my gender identity is uh, non-binary and my gender expression is, is more masculine uh, you know, than, um, than perhaps you would imagine somebody who is non-binary to be. So perhaps mm. when you think about a non-binary person, you might feel a bit confused, you might think, well perhaps they're androgynous, you know, mm. like a, a very androgynous kind of person. But um, you know, gender is, is something that, that people can really play with as well, and uh, and obviously people who define as non-binary, it doesn't take away from anyone's <coughs> identity as a man or a woman as well, so mm. it's not that, that non-binary people want to, to change the whole world into, into a kind of very unisex, androgynous kind of uh, grey world, it's not like that at all, it's more about uh, more gender expression and more uh, being who people really feel that they should be as well, and, and I think gender identity is, is a very core identity and I think that if you don't, if people don't uh, recognize you as the gender that you feel that you are, you feel quite, I felt very out of place uh, and I'm sure people can, can definitely relate to that as well so mm. um, it, and, and actually you're, it, for me it felt that my life couldn't really begin until I'd, I'd really kind of dealt with that and, uh, and you know I'm happy to live to, to tell the tale and to be on this other side and, and you reading out all those incredible you know um, Things that I've done over the past few years, I, I never thought I'd be that person. I never thought I'd be at this point. So. And there was a surprise yeah. today. Tell me about what happened with the university in Brighton. Oh gosh, yes. Well, um, my my old university, um, 
I, I did a master's there about 10 years ago at uh, University of Brighton, but they did me the great honour of um, giving me an honorary doctorate uh, last week. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so much. And, you know, um, I, n I never really thought I would I'd be awarded something like that, and it really was a very, very special honour. And uh, I, I, gave, I gave a speech at the, the kind of award ceremony at the Brighton Centre, um, when was it? It wasn't that long ago, actually. 25th of July. The 25th of mm -hmm. July, yeah. yeah. And, um, and I had a standing ovation both times, you know, before my speech and after my speech. And I had somebody from the University of Brighton write to me afterwards, and she said, you know, this is really an indication that things are changing, things are shifting, because in, in the past, you know, she'd been working for them for 16 years, and she'd mm -hmm. never once uh, encountered a standing ovation from, from students mm -hmm. and, and from everyone, really, mm -hmm. you know, it, to, to say thanks for, for doing... Um, you know, human rights work, really, and, um, it, it, you know, life's just such a funny thing, it's such a zigzag, so, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a real, real um, surprise to be, to be awarded that, but, yeah. it's a, you know, um, it was more for, for trans awareness, you know, yes. it's more the fact that things are, yeah. are really changing. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you very so much. Yeah. So, thank you. now, non-binary pronouns yes. are really not easy to learn. Challenge. So, why are they important? <laughs> okay, so going back to the whole uh, gender identity thing as well, so if people do feel that they are uh, a certain, you know, they define as a certain gender, and that could be uh, non-binary like myself, or genderqueer they might say, or gender fluid, um, it, it is very polite to say, well, what, what kind of, what pronouns would you like? And obviously, if, um, you know, it's okay to mess up, I think there's, it's to do with, um, with people's intention as well, doesn't it? So if, if so, you do end up mis pronouncing somebody because obviously gender expression or gender, gender identity are different things and also if you don't know the person that well or maybe you know the person too well you might remember them from from another time too so there, there is that adjustment phase um, but for, for non-binary people I, I suppose a lot, the majority of non-binary people do prefer kind of not using he or she and having you know using they and I know that does seem like a, perhaps a bit of a strange thing to, to kind of think about using but uh, we actually use it all the time you know we use it when we're we're talking about if we don't know the sex of the person perhaps we might say well you know I hope they win the race or I hope I haven't met them before um, you know they've got a nice hat that sort of thing so um, it, you know it's just something to kind of introduce into your language and, and language is always constantly evolving you know so um, I wasn't born knowing trans you know trans language and, and, and things like that, and, and that's shifted over time too, but I think it, it does mean, it, it shows respect, I think, to kind of keep up to date with things and, and to kind of, yeah, try, try and get on board with it, because there's not too much to learn and it shouldn't be too daunting, um, and, and obviously showing respect to someone is, is what we always want to do, mm. I think, mm. generally, yeah. Yeah. good people. So, <laughs> what pronoun do you prefer? Okay, thank you very much. Well, um, <laughs> yeah. I, I prefer uh, the pronoun they. Uh, my partner also prefers the pronoun they. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so we, we kind of uh, um, we met each other about this time last year, and uh, we've had very very different experiences. Actually, you know, I was I was assigned female at birth, and uh, I never really felt truly comfortable with my skin, and um, I had a very very long journey to kind of get to the point of realizing that I needed, um, you know, to really completely change my life, and, um, yeah, it was, it was a real kind of, um, a very long journey, because I went soul-seeking before that as well, and, and I thought, if I could, you know, what, why am I not satisfied in the body that I'm in, because, you know, I've got two arms, two legs, I'm, I'm you know, I can, I can function, I'm not, not, you know, I haven't got any um, impediments that are perhaps people around me that, that you know, they're, they're kind of people, people are dealing with all sorts of other things, and I felt very guilty actually about you know having a, a functioning body and, and still not wanting to, to inhabit it so that, that was a very very long journey to, to kind of go there and, and actually realize that it was okay to, um, to to try and get some medical intervention with that and I was scared I, I wasn't sure whether that would actually help me to feel better you know and more comfortable in the body that I was in and it was a last ditch attempt I really just had run out of options at that point so mm. I'd really gone to, to you know lots of different places to yeah. Yeah, to kind of, you know, really kind of feel, you know, about it. try and work out who I was, and and yeah, that was a really, it was a useful journey, and I don't regret that at all. I think that things happen in life at the to the time that perhaps you 
you, you maybe need it the most uh, to happen. And I always think that, that life can be very, very tough, but it often gives you as much as perhaps you could deal with. You know, maybe someone else's plate looks like too much, but you know, it, it's always kind of very, very testing. And um, I've been very grateful for the, the hurdles that I've, I've had in, in my life to get to this point. Um, what was the question, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> So, why are there no visible non-binary role models in our culture? I mean, either historically, because ah, I did yes. do some research, um, or even today. I mean, well, actually, very, very recently, this year, Michael, there's yeah. been, um, I don't know if anyone's heard of the series Billions. It's, uh, it's out on Netflix, and there's a non-binary actor who uh, defines as non-binary in real life, and they won an award recently um, for... Best actor, I believe it wasn't kind of it wasn't best male male actor or best female actor, just best actor, and I think that really really upset Piers Morgan as well. <laughs> so um, that that was in the lead up, and that's when Al and I ended up going on to Good Morning Britain about was it about a month ago or six weeks ago? It was in May. In May, okay, yeah, kind of the end of May. So yeah, yeah. So we went on and and, and had that kind of. Um, mm. I feel like apologising on behalf of the, <laughs> <laughs> on behalf of TV crews. It's just oh yeah. well, you know. I think yeah. we, we knew exactly what we were going to get ourselves yeah. into. For anyone who doesn't um, know what what we're talking about at all, um, Piers Morgan was kind of leading up towards um, just all week. He was just kind of really um, riled up about the, the people talking about gender neutral uniforms and. To me, I mean, gender-neutral uniforms is just a fancier term for unisex uniforms, and, you know, just it's more encompassing, nothing to be, you know, really scared about. But he was kind of saying gender-neutral non-binary people, is, and he was, like, confusing his terms um, and, and kind of freaking out about, you know, um, yeah, any sort of gender non-conformity and yeah. saying that he was going to wear a skirt to work, and, and, you know, it's just like, why would that matter anyway, you know? Yeah. Um, so then we were, Al and I were invited to go on to Good Morning Britain just to talk to peers for four minutes about, um, just to kind of uh, explain what non-binary is and just clear up a few misconceptions and we, we knew that it was going to be a, a tricky one because he's not an easy host and, uh, <laughs> you know, but actually he did us such a favour because he, he just, he was so absurd in this interview and he just... He started saying, "Well, if you identify as this, then can I identify as a you know black elephant?" And, and mm. um, yeah, it's just just really crazy things. So, um, and you know, he talked um, for 15 minutes. You know, it was a 15-minute segment instead of four minutes. So the people in that studio just let 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 him just kind of <laughs> run. You know, so, so we looked yeah quite yeah. quite normal. Not, not I got to hate the term normal, but we looked fairly you know yeah. um, reasonable. I think, yeah. You know. So it was, it was really interesting. So I think that these conversations are starting to be had now, you know, yes. being non-binary. Yeah. Um, you know, especially a lot of young people do define as non-binary, but it's important to recognize that this identification isn't a new thing by any stretch. It's more, um, it, in fact, if, and I hate to borrow from other cultures, but um, for, for, the, for the case of doing this, I, I, um, I'm thinking about indigenous cultures and cultures that are not from the Western world. If you look at any other culture, um, they've always had an, an acknowledgement of a third gender or, or more, than, more than two genders, that's for sure. Um, so I think that we're kind of rediscovering who we are at the moment. It's a very exciting time. And, and you know, there are setbacks. Like if we think about Trump, you know, his, his kind of tweet that he, he sent out about, the, about trans yeah. people in the military. Um, you know, it's, sometimes it does feel like two steps forward and one step back. Um, but I, th I think that, you know, when, when really awful things like this happen, you know, pe very opinionated people like Trump speak out, there's other people with other platforms that are speaking out too. And we've seen a wonderful backlash in the mainstream media with that, you know, people like James Corden doing like a song and a dance or talk show host talking about using this as a, a platform to, to ridicule Trump. You know, people are kind of taking, it, taking a stance. And, it's not that, that trans issues should be up for debate because they're not, you know, but, but we are having a conversation about trans issues right now that's, that's really, I think, uh, it's, it's more a human's right, human rights issue uh, more than anything. And, and, it's, and it's also shining a light on gender, and I think that there's not a person in this room that's, that's kind of not felt that they, were, that they didn't feel man enough or didn't feel woman enough at some point, perhaps. You know, there's such ridiculous expectations for everyone when it comes down to gender, so yeah. I, th I think this, you know, I feel very positive. Yeah, yeah. so um, 
Would you be willing to share some of your story with us and help us understand why uh, non-binary marriage is so important? And just want to take sure. a step back from that a moment, yeah. because one of the things that I've I've um, I've learnt is that <coughs> any journey which takes us in search of who we are um, is, I believe, a faith journey, because it means that we're we're looking inside and and instead of looking outside and so the, the world to define who we are, we look we look inside. And, and folks often, you know, say, oh, do you not believe in Jesus? Well, you know, and I'm like, yeah, Jesus saved me from trying to be straight, you know, pretending <laughs> to be a straight person. <laughs> um, so I think that um, however it's couched, you know, our, our journeys, because the journeys within to find ourselves are, are by their nature kind of spiritual journeys. And I just wanted to affirm that, you know, we don't need to couch it in any religion, but, sure. but I certainly think that it's a... Uh, any journey within is a is a spiritual journey, yeah. um, and I certainly know that for myself, the journey towards marriage was very much a, a faith journey. Yeah. So, so tell me why non-binary marriage is important because we we've talked about this a little in in the past. We certainly and, have. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So, uh, we met each other. I, d I think we may have known each other th uh, before the documentary, actually, but um, this year I visited you twice, actually, to, to do some filming. With myself and Al were making... We start off in January with a documentary that we're, we're doing about being non-binary because we realised there were a lot of misconceptions about non-binary people and we just wanted to kind of clear that up by explaining who we are and, and meeting some other people as well. And we, we met up with you because we wanted to hear... First, we wanted to hear about what... Um, what the Christian faith might have to say about, about trans people and perhaps mm -hmm. the idea of, of non-binary people as well, whether they've ever been mentioned. And you had some very insightful um, yeah, information about that as well as, as the Jewish faith too, so that, that was really interesting. Um, yeah, gosh. Um, so this, this documentary that we're making is actually on pause at the moment because we're, we're going to spend another few months, months finishing it off um, and, and we're going to make it an even bigger documentary because things keep changing all the time with, with this non-binary stuff, so we're, kind of, we're going to throw in the Piers Morgan thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and there was a, a tweet that happened after that that was uh, the catalyst. I think it was just the right time for this tweet to, to really go viral, but it was um, the hashtag, this is what non-binary looks like, and it was an opportunity for people all over the world to take a selfie of themselves and go, well, this is what non-binary looks mm -hmm. like. If you're in any confusion, here we are. And there was just so many different types of people that were sending their images in and that was incredibly powerful so I think yeah good things can come out of, of, of bad situations and maybe that's that's the whole part of the, the spiritual growth aspect you know you kind of have to go on that that journey where you end up feeling very very lost and you almost have to completely lose yourself in order to find yourself again I think that's, that's a very valuable yeah. and very scary journey but you know I think it does develop it does develop you as, as a human being and, uh, and beyond perhaps, you know, soul growth and uh, I, I, lo I love that, um, I'm very cu a very curious person and I'm, I, I love having conversations about, about how, uh, you know, we're more than just our, our bodies and, you know, kind of, um, I, and how we're all very much connected to each other as well and, you know, so it's, yeah, I think that we're living in very interesting times uh, and, and myself personally as well, I, I did look to religion a lot uh, on my path and and I, I, you know, I do feel that there's there's a very universal uh, energy that exists, and, and there's a very you know you can tap into good stuff in this world, and you can tap into really negative, low vibration things too. So, mm. and and I've I've definitely spent my time down in that that kind of realm, I suppose. But um, for for me, it just my life just feels so much clearer, and I feel you know just like, like I, I'm in at a position to be able to help other people too, and. And that's such a refreshing thing, you know, to actually be, you know, out to the point where you're just kind of surviving and, and, and treading water and actually, yeah, mm. here now. So I, I never thought that I'd become a filmmaker either. And it was, mm. it was by, um, I, I took part in a mainstream documentary about six years ago. And uh, that was my chance for summer mm. that you were mentioning, mm. yeah. Um, and I wasn't that happy with the edit. And uh, so I decided that I'd pick up a camera and just, mm. it was my therapy to start making films about trans people that are around me, about myself, documenting experiences. And then I realized that, that filmmaking is actually very addictive, so be careful. If you start <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, we, that's, that's why we've made so many films now, because I think it's a very powerful form of activism, and, and it's just lovely to be able to, to document time. And so this, this is a very exciting time for, for being non-binary. 
And, and thinking about the marriage issue, um, this, this is also, I mean, it was a bit of a gimmick as well for, for the documentary to think, well, you know, what, what kind of, what don't non-binary people have at the moment? Mm. And, and I suppose it's, it's quite a lot, you know, we don't have uh, general understanding or, or social, people generally don't understand us yet. And, um, and there's the toilet issue as well, and I think that, you know, toilets are getting to be less segregated. And I think we might look back on this time and kind of laugh that the toilets were at one point segregated because people just generally just want to use the toilet and, mm -hmm. and, and then go. And, um, yeah, uh, so the, the marriage issue, I mean, I never wanted to get married until I met Al, so <laughs> maybe it's about meeting the right person, but I, I, I did kind of um, shun the idea of marriage for quite a long time. I think maybe I was, I was scared of that commitment, or perhaps I thought, well, why should anyone else be there to tell me, you know, or, or to kind of seal the deal as such, because shouldn't it be enough that, that we just want to be together? And, um, but I think that I do believe in equality, and just like Trump saying that the trans people don't have the right to fight in the military, I'd fight for anyone's right to do the job that they want to do, just, uh, despite my views on war, you know. Um, and, and I feel, you know, that everybody should have the right to, to get married, um, you know, yeah. in whatever way they want to. And, um, because it's, it's obviously not hurting anyone, it's a message of love too. Yeah. Um, so we, we were actually, I'm going to name drop now, I'm really sorry, we were um, invited to 10 Downing Street about a week ago and um, uh, it, was, it was kind of one of those very, it, it wasn't an enjoyable event at all, I don't know what these <laughs> events usually are. Um, and we were there just to kind of show face and just to kind of be, be part of a bunch of other LGBT people that were swanning about and, and trying to network with each other in the, in the short space of time that we had. And uh, Theresa May came out, uh, we were in the garden, and she came out and gave a speech, which we know that she didn't write the speech, you know, but it was a very good speech, actually. <laughs> and um, she, was, she was kind of t uh, saying that, um, that they were going to use their connection with the DUP to change LGBT issues in Ireland, that they were going to make it, things better there. I thought, wow, that's, that's such a big promise. Um, but, you know, great, sure. And then she was talking talking a lot about marriage equality as well and how um, she's reminding people that a lot of the conservatives had actually done great things for LGBT uh, equality and, and awareness. And uh, so she stepped off the podium and um, she kind of walked into the crowd and I uh, just kind of jumped at the chance to, to say, well, you're talking about marriage equality but it doesn't actually apply to non-binary people and I don't know if you're aware but on the registration form is you the one to tell, tell me this, mm -hmm. that you have to take man or woman Absolutely. at the moment. So uh, in other countries this actually isn't the case, you know, in, in other countries you, with identification, and it starts with the identification with passports and so on, being able to have the X on the passport. So places like uh, Nepal and um, uh, Australia, New Zealand, um, help me out Al, Malta has the most uh, leading um, uh, policies at the moment, the leading policies for, for gender awareness, uh, gender, sorry, what was it called, the Gender, gender Recognition, gender recognition mm -hmm. Act, uh, they changed their policies in 2014, so mm -hmm. that, that kind of put them in the lead, so I was just, I, I said to Teresa, well, you know, we're kind of lagging behind a little bit here, and it's going to start to look a bit embarrassing, so, mm -hmm. um, and then, <laughs> yeah, and then Al jumped in and said that actually Iceland is looking at changing their, yeah. um, you know, their legislation, and they're looking to Malta to do that, so, it, I, maybe it's maybe it makes a difference doing you know going there and talking um, to people directly like that, or, or maybe it's all just lip service. Like I'm really really not sure actually, but yeah, I mean I'm glad that these conversations yeah. are being had as yeah. well, and um, yeah, it can only be a good thing. I'm reminded that the word courage originally was rooted in the strength to be oneself, and. We certainly have seen that here today <laughs> in you, Fox. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, sorry about that. I actually forgot that I had this poem, but it's this is a really important poem to me because um, I didn't write it. <laughs> it's, um, it's a poem um, written by a an older trans man who I've been meeting with uh, for the past five years or so, and uh, we've kind of met every every couple of weeks for some food, and he's he just told me a bit about his life uh, each time, and he's he's just had the one of the hardest lives I've ever um, heard about, really. You know, for, right from the get go, his childhood was just really really tough. You know, and he grew up in in a very tough part of Manchester, and 
ha had a lot to deal with. So when he was 14 years old, uh, his, his mum had just died, actually, and he went to his granddad, who was never a, a very nice person to him, and he said, Granddad, uh, I feel, I just don't feel right. I feel that I should have been born a boy. Um, you know, can you help me? And his, his granddad took him to a, a mental hospital and, and checked him in and kept him there for two years uh, against his, his will. So for, um, you know, for two years between the age of 14 to 16, he was there, and it was during the 1960s. And uh, you know, what, what he experienced in this hospital really has, it's never left him, you know, he's kind of still got it. So this is a poem uh, that he wrote about this time. He says, okay. I can only be this, and I cannot be that. It's just the way I am. I can only think thoughts that are only me, for it's me and all that I am. You can lock me up after wiring my head and say words that I don't understand. You can strip off my clothes, but I don't care, for it's me and all that I am. It's no big deal to call me names and drug me, because you can, for I know one day I'll leave this place to be me and all that I am. And when the time comes when I leave this world, I will leave it as a man. I will close my eyes, knowing in the end, I was me and all that I am. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.